Yeah, g'day and welcome back to the channel. I'm trying to finish off my studio camera stand this week. It's been long enough. So first thing I'm going to do is put some covers over there. I'll use this bit of extrusion for the cover. That's what I designed it around. I'd like to extend a big welcome to all of the new subscribers to the channel. It's been quite a few because this old Tony gave me a shout out. Now for those of you who don't know this old Tony, he's got sort of a little uh, YouTube channel thing going. Uh, Hello? What? Uh, everybody knows this old Tony? Thanks very much for the shout out you gave the channel Tony. I really appreciate it. As I say, welcome everybody and hope you enjoy it here. Hey, did everybody watch SpaceX fly their serial number nine starship last week. Normally when a billionaire buys beachfront property down by the border, you're thinking party time, the guy's gonna, gonna retire, huh? So what was it, summer, like 18 months ago that they flew the Starhopper, which was the first ever full flow stage combustion engine to actually fly. And yet here we are only, only 18 months later, and the things don't just fly, but they're, they run for four and a half minutes, throttle down to 30% power, and, and then relight. Man, that's amazing. I mean, the landings could be a little more elegant. I was kind of hoping to get more done this week. Yeah, I suddenly got looking at used machines and one came up that I've been looking for at or kind of lusting after for a long time. Spoiler alert, I bought it. It's going to be another oh, week and a half or so before it delivers, but yeah, looking forward to that. New machine, new project. Look forward to sharing it with you. Several days later. Last week I got quite a few good suggestions about putting an end cap on the back end of this beam just so that it can't uh, fall out by mistake. Now obviously I could just put a some sort of a screw stop thing, you know, a nut in here with a screw in it or something, or could just put a sh plain sheet of sheet metal on the end there and drill a couple of holes, but nah, let's make it a little more complicated, shall we? We are gonna need a, s a rectangle. Well, if it's 80 by 20, let's go to 26 by 86. That'll give us a, like a three millimeter wall thickness. There's probably an easy way to center a part, but I am too lazy to look it up. Fine. Added some stock around it. Now I'm going to want the my origin at the back corner. So the first feature is going to be that pocket. Just use that as the the guiding surface. Here's setup one, making the pocket, and here's setup two. Oops, that would look weird. I grabbed a bit of scrap out of my scrap bin. Not sure if I really need this, it's already scratched up, but good practice. So to change chucks, I first have to lock the spindle with that. 
and engage back gear. Next put down a bedboard and unscrew the chuck. Oh, it's tight, huh? That's extremely tight. I can't think of what I turned lately that was a heavy intermittent cut that would have caused that tightening, but rather than slogging out the, the key drive, which is a piece of wood. There we go. I tend to change chucks constantly so they don't normally get uh, too tight on the spindle nose. It's only if you leave them on for months and months they tend to get difficult to remove, but I'm not sure why that one was. Just clean out the thread. Doesn't take much. The tolerance between that alignment boss and its mating uh, bore is really tight. Yeah, it's either a 3 or a 7 micron total tolerance, H6. Now you might be wondering why a guy with a mill is mucking around squaring up stock in a four-jaw chuck on the lathe. The three-phase circuit which the mill is on is also the supply circuit for about half of the house's single phase supply. Whenever I run the maho, I end up with lights flickering in my wife's office. And when she's working, eh. So I'm gonna square up the stock, do as much as I can here in the chuck. And next time uh, my wife takes a break, I'll do the milling on the milling machine. Houses all have three phase power. I think I've got two circuits inside. One's got the oven on it. The other one's down in the basement for the various machines. Yeah, out of the gate, then a third circuit, 400 volt, 16 amp. It's got a circuit breaker out in the control panel at the gate. And that one also goes into the basement. So I just need to arrange to get an electrician to, put, to run more wiring into the garage to use that separate circuit, which doesn't have any of the household stuff on it. So do we have clearance, Clarence? Roger, Roger. I got a visit from this channel's number one fan, Nico. Seen here doing his best Walter White impersonation. And yes, we did both go and get a COVID test yesterday. At the crusty crack. This is the inside of the laptop I use for editing my videos. One of the hinge screws had come undone and I could feel the hinge getting loose so I figured I'd better get in there and fix it before it fell apart. Luckily the screw was uh, rattling around inside so not a big deal. Later that same evening Yep, I hit the vice. I mean, it's not a big deal for the mill, but I'm just a little bit annoyed about that. I should have had the work hanging further over the edge. I need to check that end mill. I'll take it out and have a look at it. And sure enough, I guess a high-speed steel end mill hitting steel at 4,000 RPM. Yeah, not really a good idea. Well, that gives something for the Clarkson to do, I guess. One pathetic soap story later. All right, let's try that again. Moved it out further in the vise, so hopefully I won't hit anything. <laughs>
Okay, now we have it. It's actually a hard stop aluminium on aluminium. It doesn't quite get to the wheel, which is perfect. Well, that's about it for this week. Bye for now, and if you like what you see, appreciate a like, appreciate sharing it with someone who might also like it. Thanks very much.